Good morning, Crossroad family. We are in Manford, Oklahoma today, where Ken is ministering at Lake Church. We sure do miss you, and we know that Colonel Bill has an awesome word from the Lord for you today. Well, we always hate to be away, but we know you're in good hands today. We'll be back Wednesday night, and next week is Resurrection Sunday. So invite somebody out, a co-worker, a family member. Let's believe God for a mighty move on Resurrection Sunday. Now today, Colonel Bill's got a great word for you. He's a great communicator. He's part of our church, and I know that he's going to touch your heart today with the word God gave him. So Colonel, take it away. You're with me. Hey, today uh, I want to talk about together we will make a difference. You know, this is that catchphrase that you see on the slides. You know, when, when Josh can't put anything else up on the screen, he puts that up there. And, and I'm just one of those kind of people that, that, hmm? You know, what in the world does that really mean? I mean, you know what I mean. Together we will make a difference. Yeah, yeah, got it. No, I really mean it. Together we will make a difference. What difference? Think about that for a minute. What is it that we do around here that makes a difference? A catchphrase like that is used in business, successful businesses, all the time. It's important that our church has one. You see, a branding, which is the you know, corporate term for this little phrase that, that you put up there, is, is who you are. What's your product? What's your service? And what is your culture by which you communicate that to the rest of your clientele? Branding, okay? Together, we will make a difference, if you will, is the branding of Crossroad Christian Center. And so today, I want to talk about the last phrase of that, a difference. We could spend a whole sermon on together. Oh, boy, does the church need to be together, right? I mean, Jesus, in John chapter 17, prayed, Father, they may be one, even as we are one. We could spend some time on that, couldn't we? We could talk about the commitment in we will. By golly. Got to have it, man. It's got to be right here. Right? But right here for what? So for me, the real key phrase to understanding that, the real key words in that phrase is a difference. Okay? Now, um, I learned something about preaching in the first service. <laughs> and, and what I learned more than anything else is there's a big difference between just talking to people and teaching people, which I do now for a living, now that I'm retired, I don't fly airplanes anymore, I teach, and preaching. Because what I learned in first service is that, you know, you may not get all your points down just exactly right, but preaching is about, do you believe it? Preaching is about, is it coming from here? Okay, and I guarantee you that what I'm about to speak to, you know what, I probably don't even need my notes. And what I got to speak to, I got it memorized because it means that much to me, okay? A difference. I love the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. And that's what it's all about. You see, Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. You have your Bibles with you. I know you do. Pastor Ken would be all over you if he didn't. He'd be going, my, my, my. Right? He would be saying that. But if you go to any one of the Gospels, you'll see that Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 4, you know, we'll, we'll just go through it really quick, okay? Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. If you want to write that down, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just going to note it really quickly. It says, from that time Jesus began to preach, and he says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. First things out of his mouth, the first sermon. The message, his purpose, was to bring the news of the kingdom of heaven. Turn to Mark, just to say that Matthew didn't just, you know, make something up. It was so important that Mark captures it in his first chapter, verse 15. Start in verse 14. Ah, there's that rustle of Bible pages. Love that. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And after John had been taken into custody... Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Well, Matthew and Mark, they got it. Did Luke get it? Turn to Luke chapter 4. The last two verses of Luke chapter 4 
at the close of a chapter in which Jesus begins his preaching ministry, verse 43, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. You see, Jesus was all about bringing his kingdom. The book of Revelations tells us that he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Now, there's a lot of things that we could say about the kingdom. There's a lot of things that we could begin to explain about the difference that the kingdom of God brings in Jesus Christ. I picked out just three. Uh, I have taught in the past in which there's about six different P's of the kingdom. Okay? There's the place of the kingdom. Jesus teaches us in John chapter 14. He says, I go to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. I have many mansions, many rooms. And if I don't go, then I won't be able to bring you. He's speaking to his disciples. That whole stretch of John from about verse, uh, chapter 13 on till, uh, till the close of 17 is all his last final instructions and fellowshipping at the Last Supper with his disciples. So it was very important for them to understand that there's a place in the kingdom a place for you and a place for me. How's it go? It's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms and a big, big table with lots and lots of food and a big, big yard where we can play football. <laughs> Amen. We know that song. Describes that place in the kingdom. The second he, if you will, would be the... Um, the P of the process. You see, Jesus came, brought his kingdom, leading us to a place, but there's a process that he teaches us, and he demonstrated it from his first breath all the way through. And it's the process of faith. Mm, yeah. You see, how often do we see in the scriptures Jesus commending those who believed? Remember the centurion? I love that line. Me being a you know, military person, I love that. You know, the centurion sends his servants, you know, send for Jesus, ask him to pray, to heal my servant. My servant's a good man. I like to have him around for a little bit. And then Jesus is heading that way, and the centurion's going, whoa, 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 I didn't mean bring him here. I just meant tell him to say the words. And what did Jesus say? Oh, man, I haven't heard such great faith in all of Israel. Jesus is jumping up and down. Can you believe that? I mean, he is so excited about that. He's looking people in the eye. Have you heard that? Can you, do you get it? You see, faith is the process by which we believe that God is going to do the things that he says he's going to do even before they happen. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later uh, today. So I'll remind myself. The third P, and I saved this one for last because it's the one I want to focus on. It's all about the person of the kingdom. You see, you can go to a place. There's lots of neat places. Okay? I think that heaven's going to be the neatest. Okay? You can talk about belief, because even the world and all the successful people will tell you that you've got to believe, you've got to see it, you've got to have vision, and that's all true because that's a principle of the kingdom. But what sets God's kingdom apart is the person of Jesus Christ. Together, we will make a difference. It boils down to the difference that Jesus Christ makes in our lives.